So we're pulling away, we're waving goodbye, at least for now, to the little casita. Bye, casita. Um, hold on, I think I just saw something. <laughs> Oh yeah, the shape of the American dream. The goal today is to take a look at it, see what condition it's in, and uh, just decide whether we want to go through with uh, actually buying it. Nice. Decal's actually in pretty good shape for uh, being 24 years old. So here we are, this is a 1999 Casita Spirit Deluxe. Uh, a few weeks ago, our friend Lori asked us if we might be interested in going in with her to buy and fix up uh, an older RV with the idea of selling it for hopefully a little bit of a profit. Certainly we don't want to lose any money on it. And uh, we decided we should start with a trailer rather than a motorhome because uh, an engine brings more complexity and cost. Casitas are fiberglass trailers, and because of that, they're generally more waterproof than uh, traditional RVs. They also tend to hold their value, and so we're hoping that this will be a good investment. I think they might need to be replaced. The wheels themselves look like they're in good shape. There's like this blue and red pinstriping. I've never seen that. So what I'm looking for in this RV is how to do as little work as possible in order to bring it up into sellable condition. I don't want to take on like a full gut rehab and uh, I don't want to have to fix a lot of water damage or if it's been smoked in that might be a non-starter. Up here on this back corner I noticed this sort of crazing in the fiberglass in the gel coat. I'm not sure whether that's superficial. I go on the other side. I'm not seeing it here. All right, in a little bit, I'll share what I later learned about this crazing, but for now, let's just keep looking around. I'm not sure what's going on here. At first I thought maybe it was a flagpole, but there's nothing to attach a flag to. Look up there, you'll see the solar panel. That's definitely aftermarket. They didn't have that in 1999. We rented a casita last year, and um, it was almost brand new casita. I think it was a 2022 model, maybe. and. Um, there's very little has changed from what I can tell. And renting that newer casita is what also made me want to find one to renovate. Actually closes, and then there's some holes, but otherwise it's in good shape. So right now, I think on a scale from one to 10 in terms of overall doability of a project like this, I think it's, I think it's up there around an eight or a nine. And this is probably a good time to mention something that I remembered later when we called Lori on the drive home. Hey, I was just reading your tag. The whole time that we were looking at it, walking around it and inside, for some reason in my mind I had the price of 9800 I thought that that was the list price or the asking price. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is this is really good for 98 um, But then Mara reminded me it was actually 12000 so. <laughs> Of course, the reason that happened is that I'd been looking at a bunch of different listings and it's hard to keep them all straight. And that $2,000 price difference, which again was all in my head, that naturally started to affect how I thought about this project. This floor looks to be within the last 10 years, I'd guess, and uh, seems to be in good shape. There are some little gaps, but yeah, it looks like just a vinyl floor. The door latch doesn't seem to latch, so... We might just need to adjust that or play with it or replace it. So there is a shower here. I'm 6'1", and I cannot stand up in here um, at all. Um, yeah, it's not very sturdy plastic. Uh, it looks like there's been a crack here that's been caulked. So I might be looking at trying to um, replace the sink. Porcelain bowl, which is nice, not plastic. Looks like there's some caulking that's been done over the years, so we might try to clean things up, those rusted bolts. There's no exhaust fan. New York casitas have a, like a vent right here that also has a light in it. This is the closet. Yeah, I think it might be a good idea to consider improving the storage in here. There's some damage here to the carpeting on this corner. We might be looking at trying to replace, at minimum, just this corner of carpeting, maybe with something else. I don't know what that would be, maybe wood. 
When I got home that night, I could not sleep. I, all I could think about was everything I wanted to change or fix on that trailer and what it was gonna cost in both time and money. New upholstery. I wanna replace the carpeting in here. An electric induction cooktop. A cover that goes across here. If it doesn't work, these are a fairly standard size. Put a small microwave in here, so it could probably be replaced. Might be nice to have something a little more modern. Whether that means just painting them or replacing them all together, I don't know. I want to install bathroom exhaust fan, an electric, you know, max air fan, this solar system. I keep on imagining something a little different, a deeper sink. Does that need to be upgraded? Replace that faucet? Replaced entirely? I would want to replace these curtains, replace the sink. The list is getting longer and longer. One thing I've been thinking about is whether or not to keep the furnace. Um, when you buy a new casita, you can choose whether you want the furnace to be included or not. And a lot of people choose not to include the furnace um, because you gain a lot of extra storage. And if you're not camping in the middle of winter, or when it's really cold, then you might not need it. This is answering the mystery of what's on the back of the trailer. So this is an, an antenna that uh, mounts on that pole at the back corner of the RV so they could get TV service. This is probably the lithium battery that is part of the solar, so nice if that could be moved somewhere. Above this rear dinette is a control panel for the Renogy solar system. It's got to be at least 10 years old. On the other side of that controller, there's a meter so that you can see your current charge capacity. This is the original battery compartment, which you can only access on the outside. This is a hot water heater next to it. One possibility for this area is maybe remove this um, battery box and make the make this a larger area that can hold two lithium batteries. Okay, so simple slider. One thing I don't like about these sliders is that if it does rain, when it rains, um, it'll drip down onto the inside, onto the carpeting, so you can kind of see that stain there. We might be able to clean that with a uh, carpet cleaner. And this one doesn't want to close. It might just be some dirt that's in the channel. So when we got home from looking at that casita, one of the first things I did was start researching the crazing or cracks, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the gel coat. And that led me to this site called fiberglassrv.com. And uh, it's a really great site with information on a whole bunch of different uh, fiberglass RVs. They also have uh, some great tutorials on solar and winterizing. And they have this buyer's checklist that you can use to help remind you of all the different things that need to be looked at uh, when you're looking at a used RV. But then probably the best thing about the site is that they have a really active user forum. I plugged in a search term like hairline cracks, gel coat, and I got a whole bunch of responses. And that's where I learned that these cracks or crazing are probably not too serious as long as you don't let it get out of control. Basically, you don't want water getting into those cracks and freezing and expanding. So if you're in the market for a new or used fiberglass RV, definitely check out fiberglassrv.com. All right, so did we get it? Well, Lori and I figured if we could buy it for 11 or 11.5 and spend maybe two to $3,000 on improvements, we might be able to sell it for about $16,000. And we knew that would leave a narrow margin for unexpected things like if it needed a new air conditioner or if the solar and batteries needed to be replaced because they're older, you know, things like that. We decided to sleep on it. And the very next day, we learned that somebody else had bought the casita. And you know, it had only been on the market for about a week, so that just goes to show how desirable casitas are. And I wasn't upset at all, because I realized through all this that I really only want to work on an RV that I actually want to own and use myself. And as much as I like them, casitas are just too small for me. And I don't want to spend all that time and energy working on something that I can't actually enjoy. I really appreciate you watching and hope this video helped you out if you're thinking of buying a used RV, either to improve and sell or to keep for yourself. If it did, hit the like button and leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have advice for fellow RVers. Thanks so much. My take was just like, um, death, by a thousand death, cuts. death by a thousand cuts. Uh, and that's my review. Thanks very much.